Hello, you're watching Video Game Subscription Wars, I'm Sam and today I'm asking whether PlayStation Now is worth it if you don't have a fast internet connection. There is a short answer to this question, which, well it's no. Wait, wait, that's only if you're playing PlayStation Now on PC. For PC owners of PlayStation Now, you can only stream games, you can't download them. Uh, the good news is, PlayStation Now's streaming capability is very good, but that's easy for me to say because I have a pretty good internet connection. I know not everyone has that luxury. For some people, my video might look like this. But that shouldn't stop you from enjoying PlayStation Now's library of games. If you own a PS4 and don't have a strong or reliable enough internet connection for streaming, you can download games to your console. The catch is that you can only download PS4 and PS2 games via PS Now. Uh, that still leaves a lot of choice, but it might make uh, the subscription's cost harder to judge, especially if you're a PS Plus subscriber and you get two free games per month anyway. Although, based on PS Plus's games for May, now might be a good time to switch to PS Now. Just a heads up before we start, I won't mention any of these games in this video, even though you can download them on your PS4. That's not because I don't recommend them, I absolutely do. In fact, here's my order of recommendation. It's because I've already reviewed them in my best PS Now game series, which you can check out if you click the little information button that has just magically appeared on your screen. So here are all the other PS4 and PS2 games that I recommend downloading via PlayStation Now. Gravity Rush's plot is as muddled as the literal English translation of its title. Gravitational dizziness, the perturbation of her inner space caused by the repatriation of the upper stratum. Cat is an amnesiac thrust into a strange new world with only a strange new cat to accompany her, who has the ability to bend gravity to its will. Obviously. You call your cat Dusty. You meet a policeman called Sid who calls you cat and you just kind of roll with it. You make a new home in the sewers. There's another gravity shifter called Raven who has a gravity shifting mouse. Ah, uh, just kidding, it's a raven. Obviously. All of these plot points go unresolved, but that doesn't matter because the story can happily take a back seat while I careen through the streets of Hexaville. Dusty grants Cat the power of gravity shift. Shift ru rushes? Gravity rushes? I'm not sure if that's the term, but you can see why it's the title of the game. Cat's gravitational manipulation allows her to shift from floors to walls to ceilings with, well, it's not quite grace. Uh, uh, I don't know, I enthusiasm? Each of Gravity Rush's missions, challenges, areas and enemies are built to let you experiment flying through a near constant state of falling with style. The movement takes some getting used to, but as you progress through the game and upgrade your gravitational abilities, you'll learn how to fall more fluidly. That said, Cat's aloof, carefree attitude kind of suits bouncing off floors colliding with street lamps and flooring townsfolk as she whooshes by them. You can use the DualShock 4's motion controls to guide Cat around, but I immediately turned it off. Gravity Rush was originally a PS Vita game, and I can see how that might work better with a handheld console, but aiming with the right stick is just easier, so I don't know why you'd bother with motion controls. While Gravity Rush Remastered is a PS4 port, the sequel is a standalone title. You can immediately see the graphical improvements here, Everything is bigger, brighter, more anime. But much the same. I was content with this, seeing as I'd spent the first game learning the controls, but it caused the sequel's opening to be quite a drag. I spent some three hours chasing people around, mining, uh, doing tutorials, sparring, mining some more. I was on the verge of losing hope when I reached a city and everything went back to normal. In fact, the fun slice of life side quests that offer little glimpses into the world of Gravity Rush is something the sequel has capitalized on to great effect. So, Gravity Rush 2 is a grander physics warping adventure with a fresh coat of paint. The overarching story is another garbled clump of exciting action that doesn't go anywhere. With nothing keeping me drawn to the story, I felt things getting kind of samey, but I think that might be because I played Gravity Rush 2 straight after the first one and I was getting motion sick. Having never heard of this game, or the 1989 Amiga game it was based on, Shadow of the Beast took me completely by surprise. 
The combat is super brutal. It's huge fun skewering people, slicing their throats open, ripping their heads off, chewing on their jugular. <laughs> it's fun for all the family. The emphasis is on timing and chaining your attacks together. There's a very slight lock-on system for smooth combo chains, which are hugely satisfying when you pull them off. The higher your combo, the more points you earn and the more you unlock, which feels kind of backwards to me. Like, shouldn't it be easier to get into the game if you're new to it? But then again, what you're looking at now is like 20 minutes in and Lil Beastie isn't having much trouble tearing through these chaps, so, you know. This game feels a little too old to review, and I don't mean that the game has aged badly. Sack people are timelessly cute, and the game's boundless creativity makes it hugely replayable. But for me, this was another case of struggling to find anyone to play with on PS Now, which is a special shame for a game like this, which is as much a social creative platform as a video game. I feel like I'm only sampling 20% of what's on offer here, and I guess that's partly my fault for getting on this game so late. This is something we must accept with PS Now, I think. Older games that don't have the multiplayer they did at launch. The solution, as I've said before, is finding a couple of friends to play with. Okay, so, it's not the 2018 God of War, so let's set our expectations straight. That game has already been and gone on PS Now, but we can hope it will return to the surface at some point. If you want to learn of Kratos' origin story in the meantime, you can download God of War 3 Remastered. And that is just the opening half an hour. Control may have slipped under your third-person action-adventure radar, considering that radar is just a big flashing Spider-Man head at the moment. A lot of this game feels intentionally vague, from your role as the new director of the Federal Bureau of Control, to the supporting cast, to the enemy you fight. Even the location. You're told it's easy to get lost in the shape-shifting corridors of the oldest house, and that's very true. I did a lot of backtracking. Even with the help of this dynamic map, there were several times I couldn't find my place in the oldest house, and indeed Control's story. And I think that's kind of the point. The FBC is extremely covert, to the point where its building cannot be seen unless you're looking for it. It's a place where the supernatural is not just the things trying to kill you, but the agency you're suddenly in charge of, and the thing you may or may not be working for. And it's not clear, perhaps at any point, which is the enemy. The game is also artistically mesmerising. The dimly lit halls of the oldest house are met head on with electrifying shootouts. Although there's not much need for shooting as you can do this. This ability has so much weight behind it, combined with the game's destructible environment that I could genuinely do it for hours. I maxed out its damage as soon as possible and combined with the shotgun upgrade felt unstoppable at times without thinking that the game was too easy. Stronger enemies can kill you just as quickly as you can kill them. 
Sometimes because control lacks a cover system and crouching behind walls never feels like you're really safe. Fortunately, I was usually rewarded with aggressive play. I mean, you don't need cover when you can throw filing cabinets at people. This was my first time playing XCOM 2, and I'll admit I'm not the biggest fan of turn-based combat unless it's as straightforward as this. I went with the beginner difficulty because the game told me to, so excuse me while I whiz through the tutorial real quick. Okay, so this isn't just combat, but turn-based strategy. And I can see how it's crucial in building tension. Each decision I made became more important as I tried to move into position to ambush enemies or evacuate civilians as the number of remaining turns ticked down. Flanking creates a huge advantage, but I had to be careful of becoming exposed. If a soldier dies on the field, that's it. They are not coming back. And that sense of finality added real weight to every excursion, and I really enjoyed it. You have just as many decisions to make off the battlefield. We can start you must manage your time at base carefully, going on missions, researching new weapons and technologies, and expanding the ship. You can recruit new soldiers in the barracks, and as soldiers get promoted, they specialize in sniper, demolitions, recon, or support classes. I then realized you can customize them all, so excuse me while I tweak them all to my liking real quick. It's a small touch, but it definitely creates a deeper connection between you and your troops, making for some heartfelt losses on the battlefield. Even on easy mode, I completely failed a mission, losing my entire squad. I returned to base, dressed in shame, preparing to recruit new troops. And then I realized the game autosaves a lot. I know it's kind of cheating, but I mean, there's no way I was losing Quentin Billingsley. There are some small niggles. Sometimes scenery obstructs your view and you miss a target from point blank range. A 57% chance of hitting them. From there? Aren't you a trained sniper? While I really like that the soldiers come from different countries, it's a shame that there aren't the voice options to match. I also noticed some frame rate drops and stutters between turns, which makes XCOM 2 a good game to download rather than stream. So, it's the perfect inclusion for this video and one of my highest recommendations on this list. The Bioshock trilogy are all tragically PS3 games. Prey offers a similar twisting storyline filled with atmosphere. Here it's the claustrophobic corridors of a space station rather than an underwater city in the ocean depths. You're very much alone and constantly in danger, left with no choice but to enhance your body through questionable methods. Scattered audio logs give context to the story and there's a host of interesting weapons, complete with a trusty wrench. Unable to trust your own brother or even everyday objects, the only one you can trust is the voice in your ear. Maybe? All the comparisons are there. You could say Prey is a fantastic, modern interpretation of the Bioshock mold, but that doesn't do the game justice. It's very clever in its unfolding of the story. You search registries to find people of interest, and find new missions from email chains. Any objective can be displayed on your HUD, however, so I was never lost trying to find where to go, I just had the freedom to choose what I wanted to find out. That freedom extends to your approach. Dishonored's diverse mission structure can be sensed here, upgrading the scientist, engineer, or security skill trees to suit your playstyle further. I had to think my way out of a lot of situations as I was no physical match for enemies, to the point where I essentially played Prey like a stealth game, if you want to avoid a lot of sneaking and restarts, I'd suggest the easy or story difficulties. I know easy sounds like it's for kids, but I was getting my shit kicked in on normal. Do you want to play a game where everyone's disappeared because a highly contagious and dangerous disease has ravaged the outside world? You, you do? Uh, okay. So what you want to do is shut your computer off, open the front door, step outside and everybody's gone to the rapture has just enough supernatural influence to remove itself from real world 2020. Amanda, I thought you'd left town. A standout in a walking simulator genre that has become crowded with special titles, you wander through an idyllic English countryside town trying to find out where everyone's gone. 
Well, they've gone to the rapture, of course, but what the hell is that, and why did they all go without telling you? It would be criminal to spoil the answer, and while the journey there can get pretty slow, like this diagram stating that R2 increases speed is just wrong. There's no speed other than, I broke both my ankles, oh my god, please help. But a little patience, or actually, it's more like a lot of patience, makes for a worthy payoff. They're some of my favourite PS4 games, but there are so many other games to play. If you're looking for something in particular that I haven't covered, I would suggest Hollow Knight for a challenging platformer, or Loco Roco for a light-hearted platformer, Bloodborne for a really challenging RPG, Fallout New Vegas or Vampire no. for more of a story focus, I will find them Doom for an FPS with energy, Metro 2033 for an FPS with survival elements, Sniper Elite 4 for a third-person shooter, and Overcooked 2 for couch co-op mayhem. If you want a story driven by dialogue, try Heavy Rain. If you want a story driven by its visuals, try Abzu. Play Until Dawn for choose your own jump scares, or play The Evil Within 2 because it just came to PS Now this month. Uh, I'll be checking that out soon. Play PUBG if you want a battle royale. Play Dirt Rally if you want a racing game or a sports game because there aren't really any sports games on here apart from tennis in the face? And play The Unfinished Swan if you want a very unique puzzler. And if you want a fighting game, you're in luck. Even if you can stream games on your PS4 via PS Now, I'd recommend downloading any fighting game to remove input lag. It's negligible in 90% of games, but in any game where your inputs need to be really precise, it's best to avoid it completely. The downside to this is that you can't play Virtua Fighter 2 because it's a PS3 remaster. So, no anti-gravity chamber fighting game for you, I'm afraid. Sorry. But you can play Street Fighter 4 Ultra, Blaz Blue, and Guilty Gear XRD to a better standard than if you were streaming. Everyone knows Street Fighter, of course, but of the other two, I'd recommend Guilty Gear XRD because it looks better. <laughs> and that probably isn't helpful, but I'm that bad at fighting games that this is the only determiner for me. They're made by the same developer, so you can expect a similar experience, I guess? Um, I don't know. I played with the stylish controls, which basically removes all skill required. Let's kick it into overdrive. Wait a second. Overdrive! I don't think there's a single PS2 game in this PS2 Classics category. Everything is technically a remastered version. So, if you're looking to download, you better hope it's a PS4 remaster and not a PS3 remaster. Unfortunately, this rules out the two games by Team Ico, Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, which are kind of the best games on here. So sorry about that. Uh, but you can play Kinetica. Don't worry, there are still some good PlayStation 2 games. Okagi Shadow King feels a lot like playing The Nightmare Before Christmas, the game. Rather than trying to save Christmas, you must save your sister from a curse that makes her speak in pig Latin. It delivers on that ridiculous premise, and its wackiness gives it real nostalgic charm. So, there you go. Some more turn-based combat that I actually enjoyed. If I can be converted, so can you. Everybody's tennis is actually kind of fun. It feels a lot like Wii Sports Tennis without the motion control. The animations are cute and there's local multiplayer for up to four people, so it's great to pick up and play if you're in the mood for tennis, but you don't want to play tennis in the face because, well... Seriously, why is this a PS4 title? It's like mobile game quality. <laughs> Forbidden Siren 2 proves that a PS2 game can still be scary 14 years later. You won't be jumping out of your seat, but there's a lot of psychological tension packed into every corridor you creep through, every corner you peek around, and every door you open praying there's nothing on the other side. The linear structure of its missions, which is almost always start level, find object, pick it up, leave level, can get repetitive, but the constant teases and suggestions that something is watching you will keep things from ever getting slow. And also this, this face. Jesus. <laughs> This is a game where you match fireworks by their colour to create a dazzling firework show. 
The menus, soundtrack and voiceover feel about as early 2000s era as you can get. It makes me just want to bust out my old DDR dance mat and just vibe out, man. Three chain. Three chain. Fantavision's premise might sound easy, but it's not. That's partly because the lock-on mechanic feels pretty loose, but it's mostly down to the game's complexity. You can't just jump in and figure things out. You have to watch all of these tutorials. Hi everyone, welcome to the world of Fantavision. And whatever you do, don't in press the X button mid-tutorial like I did because it will quit out and you'll have to watch the, the whole thing again. Basic rules. Hi everyone. If you can, get through that, it's pretty fun. Some reviews were quite brief there in order to cover a wide slate of games, but I hope that gave you an idea of the games you can download on your PS4 via PS Now and its value because of that. I think it's still worth £9 a month, um, but I also hope that your internet provider sorts their shit out soon so you can stream games as well. In the meantime, make sure to check out my best PS Now game series uh, for more ideas of what games to play. And if you want a more in-depth review of any of those games or something else, uh, just let me know. I wouldn't mind getting into the details into some of these games rather than bounce around a lot all at once. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm switching subscriptions for a bit. Uh, moving away from PS Now onto Origin Access, uh, I think I'm going to cover uh, FPSs and maybe multiplayer games. But if there's anything in particular you want to see on there, let me know. It'll be a good chance to compare first-person shooters, for example, on um, Origin and PlayStation Now to see which is better. For those of you who are part of these video game subscription wars, which seems to be more people every time I go and upload a new video, which is equal parts amazing, uh, weird, <laughs> and very humbling. So yeah, for all you guys who continue to watch my videos, thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, thank you for making it to the end of this video. For starters, uh, congrats, well done. Uh, please consider subscribing for more videos like this on every video game subscription there is. Whether you're subscribed or not, thank you so much for watching. Really means a lot to me. Um, and I'll see you on the next one. See you later.